What's up everybody, welcome to my kitchen. Uh, it's one of those weird days in spring here in Ohio where it's snowing outside and I'm kind of sick today. So we're gonna try to be productive and accomplish some stuff from indoors today. And I've got a whole list of projects that I've been putting off for a long period of time. I know you guys have them too, but the majority of mine center around cleaning stuff. You can ask the VSO mud girl, I'm not very good at cleaning things. And that includes things like silencers. So I've had this thing for a couple years. This is a Griffin Optimus. It's a modular silencer that you can put a bunch of modules on it to make it do various things. Um, this one is so carboned up that I cannot get the fixed barrel spacer out of this end cap. That is two pieces that look to be, <laughs> they look like they've been rock set together, but it's just carbon lock. Uh, anyway, for today's cleaning, we're gonna be using this. This is the Turbosonic 6000. Uh, it's a Lyman product. And I talked to these guys at SHOT Show about some of the stuff that they were doing in a variety of spaces uh, within the gun industry. And I thought it would be a really cool thing to look at, especially since uh, in a previous life, I was a scientist. I still consider myself a scientist, but specifically I was a chemist for a long period of time. And so I have a lot of experience on things like that. And uh, as a scientific piece of equipment, it's got a lot of functionality and it's got everything that we need uh, for today's cleaning. Before we get started, this can is all stainless steel construction. You need to know what your, what your equipment is made of before you put it into one of those types of cleaning devices because you cannot put any aluminum components in an ultrasonic cleaner. I hope I said that slow enough so that everybody got the concept. The reason why you can't do that, and I'm gonna nerd all over you for a second, so I apologize, is it can create what we call microchanneling. And what that means is when you bombard a, an aluminum structure with ultrasonic sound waves, they can excite some of those molecules and they can move around within the crystal lattice. That creates these small little pockets inside the aluminum structure that can weaken it. When you repressurize it, like putting it on the end of a firearm, uh, it can basically damage the components and blow up in your face. So don't put any aluminum components in your ultrasonic cleaner. Uh, this one, again, should be fine because it's all stainless steel. Shouldn't be a problem. In fact, all we're going to do for this is we're going to separate the rear component, the front cap, and we're gonna put the whole thing in there as is, just see how she does. All right, so look at the control board here. If we go to the very back, there's an on off switch. Uh, after you turn it on, uh, she powers up and you can see that we've got a display going on here. So let's run through a couple of the basic functions really quick. Again, I have not used this yet. So we're just gonna kind of roll through them as I know them right now uh, and from my previous experience. So uh, we have the on off button. So this is how you make it go. Uh, we haven't filled it yet, but basically that gives you an idea of the sound signature that you'll hear from this thing. Functions, so we have normal and degas here. And unless you're making mobile phase, uh, the degas function doesn't mean a whole lot to you. So don't worry if you're not using this for scientific applications, you're just using it to clean. Normal will do fine for you. We have the ability to change the time here and it looks like this goes up to 30 minutes. Yeah, so it goes up in increments of five, um, and then you can use the down button here to, like if you want 23 minutes instead of a nice round, and then if I hit the time again, it goes back up to the next increment. Temperature, uh, so this, uh, what this does is it allows you to change the temperature and for cleaning gun components, we want this sucker to be as hot as we can get it. And it looks to me like the max temperature is 140 degrees Fahrenheit on there. So let's go ahead and turn this thing off and uh, take a look inside. So for today's video, I'm going to actually remove this shield because we're gonna leave the thing open uh, so that we can film today. So let's set this aside. It removes fairly easily, uh, but inside we have a basket and this is obviously to hold all of our stuff so we can easily remove it. But the other function that you wouldn't know unless you uh, use one of these things before is that the purpose of this basket is to keep your substrate off the floor of the sonicator. And that allows the solvent to maximally interface with the floor of the sonicator. So it's not super vital, but it can, it can help the cleaning process if your stuff is off the floor of the sonicator. So not, that's not always an option, but if you've got a basket for yours, 
keep it, use it. Now for today, especially for the Optimus cleaning, we are going to use the Turbosonic ultrasonic cleaning solution. Uh, this is another one of Lyman's products that they send along with this thing. And basically it kind of smells of like dilute fuel. A surfactant is more of a broad spectrum thing, which can only help you when you're talking about, uh, you know, cleaning stuff, which is what we're doing here today. So we're going to use it. It calls for the use of distilled water. The reason it calls for distilled water, you can use tap water, but it's going to have impurities in it. And depending on how your treatment plant does things, those can be rust promotion sites uh, left on your gun. So you want to make sure that you're you're cleaning those away before you put them away before you oil them and stuff like that because depending on the composition there could be a lot of salt in there um, it's mostly minerals and things like that that aren't extracted from the, the water when it's treated but they can cause um, they can be sites of rust promotion so keep that in mind uh, this was like a buck at uh, at kroger and that tells me that it's probably not very good distilled water anyway um, we had lots of grades of, of distilled water, everything from good distilled, uh, crappy distilled, very crappy distilled, and like HPLC grade water. I would put this on the spectrum of below crappy distilled. Um, it's perfectly safe to drink and in, like we use it in the Keurig. So it, it's, it's, it's fine to have in your house. It's not going to hurt you or anything like that. It doesn't have any stabilizers or anything like that. Nothing that you're going to buy at the grocery store is going to be capable of doing that. So... If you have it on hand, cool. If you don't, use the tap water, but just keep that in mind. All my guns are black guns anyway, so they're mostly aluminum, so it's not really a big deal. Um, can't go in there anyway. <laughs> so I would show you guys inside this thing how dirty it is. Um, this is a good representation here. This should be silvery. Uh, but if I put this in here, which is how you're supposed to, like, I'm not a weak person either like I can't get this apart so uh, we're just gonna put it in as is and then we'll see what it looks like after we're done So it's been about 15 minutes and I'm gonna pull the end cap out and see if I can get it apart now. Um, so this was, huh, well, look at that. These things are going to clean much more easily if you can get them apart. So now that this is apart, I can, I mean, if you just look at all that material that's built up on there, this can go back in and continue to be blasted um, this thing may even be cleanable with a rag, but we'll leave it in there just a little bit longer. Okay, so I've gone ahead and shut down the ultrasonic cleaner. Uh, I took the liberty of removing the tube uh, and I went ahead and extracted the baffles. So as you can see, that's nice and clean. This could now be cleaned with a brush, but since we have the ultrasonic cleaner here already, we're gonna put it back in with some fresh solvent and the baffles now individually out. And you can see these should be shiny and they are not. However, I will say, well, maybe you can see the, la the layer of crud. Yeah, see that inner thing there? That inner ridge, that shouldn't be there. That's all crud. Without the use of the ultrasonic cleaner, I don't think I would have got these out. Ideally, this is how it should be done from the beginning. But again, remember, we couldn't get this thing apart. You would want to disassemble this thing down as far as you could before you put it in there to get the best cleaning of all the parts. But again, like I said, I couldn't get it apart. Even with, I was in fear of damaging the thing. Uh, and with a regulated item, it's a that's a problem. So... Um, now that it's disassembled, the cleanup should be much faster.
So let's see what we've got here. Yeah, these are looking pretty good. Now, they could probably be cleaner, but uh, the one thing you gotta remember, guys, is that your suppressor components don't need to be super clean. In fact, your silencer is going to perform, perform better if it's marginally dirty. And that's uh, because you've got that much more surface area with the carbon on the surfaces uh, to create more chaos inside your silencer. But many of these are beyond where I would consider them needing to be clean. Any good ultrasonic cleaner should have a discharge valve. So if we just spin this, we can now see, I'm not sure if you guys can see it or not, but all that material should be running out. Yep, you can see it now. Uh, and we'll tip it just to speed the process a little bit. So this is my Obsidian 45, or at least the housing components of my Obsidian 45. Uh, this can is an aluminum bodied can, but the baffle stack is stainless steel. So they're going in there next. I'll give you a shot of what they look like before and then we'll check them out after they're done. So this is what we were working with, set up for a fixed barrel. Now we're going to remove the fixed barrel spacer and put the piston spring in there. And we can just reassemble that like that. And now this thing will be set up for use on a nine millimeter pistol for our next project. Specifically speaking, this new upgrade kit from Blacklist Industries. Uh, found them on Instagram, met them at some industry events. They make some pretty high quality parts for Glocks. Uh, and this one really quick, there'll be a full video on this, but I've got their upgraded barrel, it's threaded, uh, pin kit, guide rod, and lighter spring for use uh, in suppressor testing. This is a Glock 19 and it is a Gen 3. I believe that their equipment is uh, good to go through Gen 5. Oh, one more thing I forgot to mention. Uh, flared Magwell there on the bottom. Steamy as to be expected. Let's see what we got going on here. Oh yeah. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and put this thing back together off camera i've already done one for you guys i don't think it's necessary for me to do another uh silencer assembly video if you want to see more about the obsidian we have a video out on the obsidian specifically uh but this is a pretty good turbosonic cleaner or ultrasonic cleaner it does a a pretty solid job at, at cleaning these things and minimal work on uh, my end uh, that's for sure maybe we'll do another video in the future with just water to see how it does but i still think it would do a pretty good job um, with just water, uh, without that extra soapy stuff that's in there. Um, now I know that some people will say, well, Hey man, I mean, you're doing that in your kitchen, you're pouring that in the sink. Like, what are you doing? Um, there was a concern on a previous cleaning video that we used, uh, that we used the kitchen for, uh, I'm going to make a separate video for, uh, how to make your kitchen safe. Uh, if you're using your kitchen on a regular basis to clean your guns. So it looks like we didn't quite make it to 140 degrees. It looks like it's teetering back and forth between 135, 137 degrees, somewhere in there, which is where we would approximately want it to be anyway. But we're going to break this video off here because that is our look at cleaning a silencer or multiple silencers, actually, uh, with an ultrasonic cleaner, specifically the Turbosonic 6000 from Lyman.